Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a one-sample t-test using SPSS, including testing for the assumptions. Taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, you can see I have an independent variable program. I have REBT, Rational Mode of Behavior Therapy, and a wait list, you know, 50 records. And then I have a dependent variable, anxiety. And let's assume that these scores are T-scores. That's a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So in this case, if the research question that we had was, is there a statistically significant difference between rational mode of behavior therapy and the wait list, we would use an independent samples t-test. And of course, the way these data are arranged and the research question that we ask is a very common design. You have two groups and one dependent variable, and you want to see if there's a difference between the two groups. A one sample t-test is used when you only have a dependent variable and you have the population mean. So for a one sample t-test, we would not have an independent variable. This, this would not be used when conducting a one sample t-test only this variable, in this case, a measure of anxiety. So we know that this measure is recorded as t-scores, again with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So we would use the score of 50 as our population mean. So the question that's answered by a one sample t-test is, did the sample, the dependent variable, come from the population? So again, in this example, when we conduct a one-sample t-test, the independent variable will not be used at all. It does not tell us anything about the differences between these two groups, only about the values in the anxiety variable and how those values relate to the population mean. Before I move forward to conduct the one-sample t-test, there are a few assumptions. The values need to be independent it must represent independent observations and the dependent variable must be recorded as interval or ratio so the dependent variable cannot be recorded as nominal or ordinal only interval or ratio the dependent variable should not have outliers and the dependent variable should be normally distributed so I'm going to test those two assumptions by going to analyze Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. From the Explore dialog, I'm going to move Anxiety over to the Dependent list. And I'm not going to do anything with Program because that doesn't factor into a one-sample t-test. Under Statistics, I'm going to add Outliers. Descriptives is checked off by default. Under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, check off Histogram, and check off Normality, Plots with Tests. Click Continue no changes under options, and click OK. So here we have the output from the explore function. And first we're looking to see if the data and the dependent variable are normally distributed. So if we first look at skewness and kurtosis, we can see both these values are within the guidelines for normality. So there are several guidelines for skewness and kurtosis. Uh, one popular set of guidelines would be the absolute value for skewness cannot exceed 0.8, and it doesn't here. And for kurtosis, the absolute value can't exceed 2, and of course it doesn't here. So we're good with skewness and kurtosis. Moving down to tests of normality, we would decide in advance if we were going to interpret Komogorov smirnov or Shapiro-Wilk. Shapiro work is probably a more common choice. And you can see the p-value here for Shapiro Wilk, 0.169. That value is greater than 0.05. So we would assume that the results of this test are indicating that the data independent variable are normally distributed. And then of course we want to take a look at the histogram. And we can see that generally we have the bell curve here 
in this histogram. It's not perfect, but generally we can see the bell curve. And that's what we're looking for to determine if the variable is normally distributed. So based on the skewness and kurtosis, the results from the Shapiro-Wilk test and the histogram, we would say that we've met the assumption for a normally distributed dependent variable. And then the test for outliers, I'm going to move down to the box plot. And we can see above the top whisker, there are no uh, values plotted. And below the bottom whisker, there are no values plotted. So we're going to make the determination that we have met the assumption of no outliers. Now to conduct the actual one sample t-test, I'm going to go to analyze, compare means, and you can see here the second option is one sample t-test. Select that. This is the dialog for one sample t-test. This is what it looks like by default. I'm going to move over anxiety to the test variable list box. And then I want to set the test value, and this would be the population mean. So in this case, it's going to be 50. So we have the test variable anxiety, the test value 50, no changes under options. Click OK. And then we have the results from the one sample t-test. So you can see we had 50 records, n equals 50, the mean 47.84, we also provide the standard deviation and the standard error of the mean. Then down in the one sample test table, we can see we have the value of the t-statistic, the degrees of freedom, and then the p-value. And the p-value in this case is 0 0.003, which means there is a 0.3% chance that these values were observed through random error alone. 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.05, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the population mean and our sample. So in this case, we would say there's a statistically significant difference between the population mean of 50 and the data in our dependent variable. I hope you found this video on conducting a one-sample t-test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.